Good morning, and welcome to CSIT 103. My name is Luis Flores, and I'm going to be your professor for the Spring 2013 CSIT 103 class. My email address is floresla at lacitycollege.edu. My phone number is 323-953-4000, extension 2685. My office is located in Franklin Hall 203. The purposes of this video are to orient you to my class. What are the rules, the expectations, the requirements for this class? We have a lot to talk about, and I'm going to be as brief and direct as I can. So let's get started. Rule number one. Please do not send me emails after 4 p.m. on Fridays or on the weekend. Do not send me emails on the holidays either. People misunderstand and think that online classes mean that I have to work on the weekends and that I have to work on holidays. And I don't. So I'm going to ask you to please respect my weekends and respect my holidays. Online does not mean that I work for you or for anybody on the weekends. I promise you I will not send you emails on Fridays after 4 p.m. or on the weekends or on holidays because I will respect your space as well. Please close all emails with your name and the class in which you are enrolled. For example, if you're enrolled in CSIT 103, section number 0317, please close your email with your name and that information about the class. If you're on the 101 class, then you would, of course, and so on. Okay. Do not expect an email reply from me unless you follow rules 1, 2, 3 above. I should also add, and I'm going to type right now, do not expect email re replies unless you use your official email address. Let me change the font type of that. Nice and big so everybody can read it. Do not expect email replies unless you use your official email address, which is your official email address, your official LACCD email address. Number two, students must check their email at least once a week. This is very important. This is an online class, and it is my primary way of communicating with you, aside from YouTube. Send emails to my official LA City College email address, which you see on the screen. I will try my best to reply to you before 48 hours are up from your email, but I need sometimes 48 hours because I get busy. When you send emails to me, please make sure that you follow netiquette rules. If you don't understand or don't know the meaning of the word netiquette, please Google it and get yourself informed and up to speed. I will not reply to anybody who does not adhere to simple etiquette email rules. Lastly, when you send an email to me, make sure that you write in this subject clearly what the nature of your email is. Are you having problems with a question, a quiz question? Did I make a mistake on something? Um, are you trying to set up an appointment to see me during office hours? What is the nature of your email? Please state that clearly in the subject. Once again, do not expect email replies to me if you don't adhere to these basic rules. It is very important to note that there's a last date to drop this class. You may decide that this is not the class for you. And you need to know when the last date to drop is before uh, you get a W or a incomplete. You should also note that this, if this is the, not your first time taking this class, if you've taken this class in the past and you have not passed it and this is now your third time, that you need to make sure that you pass it this time because if you don't, 
and this is when you fail it for a third time, you will not be allowed to take it again. This is California state law, not LA City College rule. This is California state law. Not participation. What does it mean to not participate in my class? Missing two or more assignments, consecutive or not, could seriously jeopardize a student's grade and could, without arrangements from, made from the instructor, make him or her subject to being dropped from the course. What does that mean? That means that if you don't do your homework and you miss two or more assignments, I have the right to drop you and then I, I don't have to tell you about it. So I suppose if you know that you're going to be busy, you're going to be in the hospital because you're ill and there's a good chance that you're going to miss some work and you're going to miss two assignments, then my recommendation is to drop this class right away. Non-participation includes, but it's not limited to, not watching my weekly recorded videos. If you're watching this video, you're already off to a good start. There will be many videos to watch. This is my primary way of teaching. I think it's a good way to teach. And I need people to watch my weekly videos. If you don't think you have the time to watch weekly recorded videos, you should drop the class. Not completing weekly homework assignments. Not completing quizzes. Not completing the midterm or the final. These are all examples of non-participation. Of course, there are other. But here's an idea. So if you know right away that you're not going to be able to complete your homework on a timely basis, on a regular basis, then you should drop the class. What should you do right away? You should get your books right away if you haven't done so already. I'll be going over the book requirement in a minute when I go over the syllabus. You should get the software. I'll tell you what software you need in a minute. Um, you should also uh, watch my recorded lectures. And, of course, you should read the announcements on etudes. I'll not tell you about etudes in a minute as well. About 103. If you are not a computer science major, you should drop this class and take 101. I want to repeat that. If you are not a computer science major, you should take, drop this class and, take, and drop it and take 101. CSIT 103, the class that I'm talking about, is for computer science majors. These are people who want to be a computer science major. They're taking 103. What is 103 all about anyway? Well, in 103, you're going to learn about the office suite, board, Excel, PowerPoint. You're also going to learn how to program, visual basic programming. And that part right there, Visual Basic Programming, that is not included in 101. And then you're also going to learn some basics on web development. You should read the syllabus very, very carefully because I want to enforce it very strictly. There's a syllabus quiz. That's a type of if you say take syllabus, as you say take syllabus quiz right away. I will talk about the syllabus quiz in a minute. But everybody needs to read the syllabus and you need to take the syllabus quiz right away. This class is not for people who have a Macintosh. If you have a Macintosh and you don't think you can make your Macintosh run Windows PC software, then you need to drop the class. Well, that's not true. We have free sources. We have Franklin Hall 206 that you can use. So I take that back. But I do want to say that this class is taught, is taught on a Windows PC. I would not use a Mac. The software that we're going to learn runs only on a Windows PC. So if you have a Mac, you need to find ways to, to work. Get yourself an RPC or come to LACC to do your homework and your required assignment. You are going to need some software for this class. And I see in looking at the software that I've, in, and in looking at this list, I see that I forgot something that I would type in a minute. But you, there's software that everybody is required. Once again, you need PC software. 
the PC software that you need is number one, Office 2010, which consists of Word, Excel, Access, and PowerPoint. If you have Office 2013, of course, that's okay. You're going to need a program called Expression Web 4, which we are going to give to you for free. We use Expression Web 4 to make websites. I will tell you more about the websites that you're going to have to make in a minute. But the bottom line of this slide is that you need software. You need to buy somehow Office 2010, but we will give you for free Expression Web 4, which is used to make websites. There's a free download program called Eclipse Crossword that you're going to need to get from this website, www.eclipsecrossword.com. So you can download that software from there. I'll show you how to use that, of course. That is why you're taking this class, isn't it? So don't, ex don't say, I don't know how to use Eclipse Crossword. You don't know how to use Expression Workflow. You don't know how to use Office. But that's why you're taking this class. I will be teaching you how to use it. All I'm saying is this is what you need. Some of it is free and some of it you have to buy. You're also going to need another program, very important program, that I forgot to write. That is called, and I'm on it right over here, Visual Studio um, 2012. Let me change the size of that. Okay. You're also going to need that, that program. Oh, that's Studio. This is Studio. Sorry. By the way, you can see that I make mistakes, and I do that all the time. So you're going to catch me making mistakes here and there when you do, and it affects your grade. Please bring it to my attention. But you are going to need Visual Studio 2012. This you can get for free from from Franklin Hall 206, or you can download it for free. We'll talk more about that when the time comes during the course of the semester. You should just walk away with it from this slide with the fact that you need software. Okay, most of it is free, except Office. You gotta buy that. It's going to be optional software for some optional, for some extra credit. I'm hoping all of you are going to do extra credit. And if you are going to do extra credit, you will need to learn extra software. This optional software is also free to use, so don't worry about spending money. You're going to have homework. There's going to be homework out of the Technology in Action book. Um, you will have, at the end of each chapter, I'll just give you a general idea, of course, and when the time comes, I will tell you exactly how to do your homework and that sort of thing. But the bottom line is, look, you need a book, and out of this book, you have homework. The Technology in Action book, the 10th edition book, there's homework out of that. You're going to have to make things called puzzles. Okay, I'll show you how to make those puzzles. I'll show you a sample live puzzle in a minute. Okay? But you need a book, and there's going to be homework out of that book. And out of this Technology in Action book, you're going to have to make puzzles. There's another book called the Go Office 2010 Second Edition book. And out of this book, you're also going to have homework. The homework out of this book will involve Word, Excel, Access, PowerPoint. And yes, just like the puzzles that you're going to make out of the Technology in Action book, the homework that you're going to do out of the Go Office 2010 book, all those homework assignments will have to be posted on the website, the website that you will develop. And I will show you some student websites right before this video is over. Bottom line is, there is homework out of this book as well. There's a third book for this class, and that's the Visual Programming book. And yes, um, actually, you'll see how it's, it's a suggested homework assignment for this. I will talk about that later. Bottom line is though, that there is this book called Vision Basic Programming Book that you're going to need. And I'll give you the details of each one of the three books 
ISBN number, publisher, and all of that in a minute. Just continue to listen to the video, please. You're going to have to do some quizzes. The quizzes are based out of the technology in action book. There's a student guide that I have that will help you tremendously to prepare for these quizzes. You, these quizzes are going to be, uh, each quiz is made up of the first three chapters, or every three chapters make up a quiz. I'll give you the details in a minute, but for instance, your first quiz out of the Technology in Action book is made up of chapters one, two, and three. The second quiz out of this book is made up of chapters four, five, and six. The third chapter is made up of chapters seven, eight, nine. So every three chapters, you take a quiz. You're going to have 45 questions and 30 minutes to answer each one of these quizzes. So the quiz is made up of 45 questions and you have 30 minutes to answer. Make sure that when you take your quizzes, you do it from a reliable computer and from a computer that is connected to a reliable internet connection because you only get one chance and you don't want to waste it. And there are deadlines for these quizzes. We'll talk about all these details. The bottom line is, look, you're going to have to take quizzes and that will give you more details of the time to take the quizzes approaches. The final exam is also based out of that same book for the quizzes. So this technology in action book is an, an important book. It's important because it's used for homework, for quizzes, and for your final exam. Your final exam will consist of two hours 130 questions, chapters 1 through 13 from this book. The final exam will be password protected, and I will give you the password when the time comes. The questions from the final exam are from the same study guide as the quizzes. I'll tell you more about that, but that's good news. That's really, 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 very, very, very good news. I'll talk about the study guide in a minute. E2CNG is an online resource that we use to communicate and exchange important information. Everybody needs access to E2CNG. That's where you're going to go to and take your quizzes and your tests, access and retrieve important student data files, access and retrieve other important resources such as recorded lectures like this one that you're listening to, important websites and all kinds of important stuff. E2ZNG is where I go to give you something, and that's where you go to get that something that I gave you. Everything important, anything of importance in this class goes through E2ZNG. If you've never used E2ZNG, then you need to learn how to use it right away. I will keep, keep track of everybody's grade at a website called Ngrade. Um, I will generate an account for you during the second week of classes. And, and I will send you an email saying here your username and password to ngrade.com. It is your responsibility to go to ngrade.com and check your grade once a week. This is an important resource, and this is how I let you know how you're doing in my class if you're getting an A, a B, or a C. Come the end of the semester, you're going to know before the class is over, whether you're getting an A or a B or a C or whatever it is you're getting. So ngrade.com is an important resource. You need to go into ngrade.com and start checking your grade starting the second week of classes. I already mentioned that everybody's going to have to make a website. The purpose of making the website is so that you can post and turn in your required assignments. Of course, I will teach you how to make websites. Of course, I will teach you how to make those homework assignments, upload them, and link them. That is why you're taking this class. But the point is, everybody has to maintain their website. If you don't post your website, you don't keep your homework on your website, your links don't work, 
you will have missing assignments, you will fail my class. Don't let all of this that I'm telling you scare you or, or make you nervous. This is going to be a fun class. All you got to do is keep up. There are deadlines to assignments. There are videos that you need to watch. And if you watch all my videos as you're doing this one, you're not going to have any trouble getting an A in my class. We have an open lab in Franklin Hall 206. This is very, very important and very useful to students, especially to those students who don't have PCs, don't have money to buy software, and maybe are short on cash and cannot get the books right away. So Franklin Hall 206 provides you with all these things. This is where you also come to if you need to get some free software like Expression Web 4 to make your website, remember I told you. If you are going to come to Franklin Hall 206 to get some software, like Microsoft Expression Web 4, you need to bring proof of enrollment, bring a thumb drive with at least four gigabytes of free space, and bring your ID card. Without those three items, they will not give you anything. Proof of enrollment, a thumb drive with four gigs of free space, and your ID card. This lab is open Monday through, and that's a typo. They're not open Monday through Friday. That's a correction. That's a terrible mistake. Let me correct that right now. Okay, I made the correction. Um, Franklin Hall 206 is only open Monday through Thursday, through Thursday from 8 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. They are closed Friday and weekends. So you need to plan your schedule. There are two dates to my assignments. And all my assignments are due on Fridays. And if they're due on Fridays, and this place is closed on Fridays, that means you got to do your homework, your required assignments, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Don't wait until the last minute. OK, this is important. Franklin Hall 206 is only open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and they are closed on Friday and weekends. Here's my contact information. If you need to get a hold of me, you can come and see me during my physical office hours, or you can just um, connect to me via online uh, during my online office hours, which happen to be the same, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So I'm here in the morning. So you can just stop in, Franklin Hall 206, or you can call me, or you can um, connect to me through CCC Confer. I will have a special video on how you can connect to CCC Confer and, and have a live chat, if you will. It's actually a video conference. We can do it like a teleconference um, online. OK? Otherwise, you can call me during these hours or shoot me an email, whatever. OK, but these are my office hours. So what I want to do <coughs> next during the rest of the video is to show you some samples to the website, like the ones you're going to have to create, and go through some important uh, sections on etudes and tell you what etudes is all about in case you've never heard of etudes. So in a minute, in a few seconds, I'm about to change your screen. So here we go. Your screen is changing. Your screen just changed. So what you need to do is make sure you highlight it. Excuse me. Make your window larger so you can see exactly what I'm displaying. OK. Right now, your window just changed. And I'm asking you to please grab your mouse, grab a corner, or grab something so that this window is large enough so you can see what I'm displaying. You should be looking at the LACC website right now, because that's what I'm displaying. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two sample student websites, such as the ones you're going to have to create. Here's one. This is Ika Mohammed. She, that's her picture right there. Everybody's going to have to have a picture of yourself on your website. She decorated this website, her website, with giraffes and that sort of thing. So that's nice. And um, this is her menu, her menu to her homework assignments. So 
So you can see that uh, she made some puzzles. She's got links to some lab word assignments, some links to some Excel, some taxes, some PowerPoint, and some extra credit. So that's what you got to do. And I will teach you how to do these things. I'm just showing you what a sample student website looks like. If I click on puzzles, like the puzzles you're going to have to make, that will take me to a link. And this is an interactive JavaScript puzzle that she made for me, like the ones you're going to make for me. The way these work is this. You click on a row, or you click on a column, and you get a hint. And, they, and then you type whatever you think the word is, or you can just click solve. And the word for that was hyperlink. If you click on another one, you get a hint that you got to read. And you can click solve or type whatever you think the answer is. And if you type the incorrect answer, then, and then you can click solve. Anyway, so these are puzzles, like the puzzles you're going to have to make. Don't get too hung up on the puzzles right now. Understand that you will have to make websites. This is a sample student website like the one I expect you and everybody else to make. Here's another one. This is Donna. And this is her website. Okay, she made some puzzles, word assignments, Excel, Access, PowerPoint, and some extra credit. So these are sample student websites, such as the ones you're going to have to make for me. And you will need special software to do this. The special software that you're going to need is Expression Web 4, which is free to you as a CSIT student at LACC. All right, now I'm going to talk to you about um, E2's portal, E2's NG. To get to E2's portal, you go to the LA City College website. When you click on the LA City College website, you click on For Students right here on this link. You're going to see here a link that says E2's Portal, and right there underneath E2's Tutorial in case you don't know how to use this application. I am not going to teach you how to use this. I expect you to teach yourself how to use E2's. It's a very easy program to use. Just go through the tutorial. E2's Portal, you click on that, and that's going to take you to a place where you can log in. If you cannot log in because you already forgot your password, you can get help right here, login help, reset, request to reset your password, or I sent you an email with the name of a professor who can get a hold, who can help you with your E2s account. Okay? Please do not send me emails telling me, Mr. Flores, fix me, my, fix my E2s account because I cannot fix your E2's account. I'm going to repeat that. Please do not send me emails asking me to fix your E2's account, username, or password, because I cannot do that. You have to contact that person whose name I gave to you in my email, or click on one of these links to get some sort of help. In any event, you type your user ID and your password. and then you click Login. Depending on the classes in which you are enrolled, they're going to appear here. Or not. There are also links over here and here. So if you're in my 103 class, you would click on Cosi 103. That's what I'm going to do next. And immediately on the home screen, you're going to see Olive asking you to respect the deadlines of the assignments and that there's no whining in my class. There's a calendar here with events and announcements. You click on these, and it tells you what it's due, like due date for the syllabus quiz, open date for quiz one, and so on. I'm going to click right here on syllabus and go to the syllabus and not read the syllabus to you, but just highlight some important points. 
on the syllabus. When I click on that, I have to click on this link, and there is my syllabus. Here's my contact information again, and these are my office hours. Here's a brief description of the course, and if you are a student that has disabilities, you need to contact the Office for Special Services at this number and make arrangements. Here's information about dropping the class, the exit and entry skills for my class. You can read that. Some requirements. I already mentioned that you need to have a Windows PC for my class. Here's a link to the California Community Colleges Foundation. In case you need to buy Office 2010 or Office 2013, you can buy it from the California Community Colleges Foundation for $40. That's a very, very good price. What should you do right away? What you're doing right now, which is listening to this video, logging to Eaton, so you're already doing what you need to be doing. Next, in my syllabus, I have a listing of all the activities that you are going to be doing in my class. I recommend that you read that slowly. Here are the point values for each one of those activities. And then over here is my grading scale. What's an A, what's a B, what's a C, and so on. So this is important. I suggest that you read it carefully. I do want to point out that, notice here it says, suggested homework assignment. There's, for my visual basic programming part, when we get to it, your homework is really not going to be homework other than a suggested homework. There is homework that is required and everybody has to do and everybody has to turn in, like my Office 2010 homework assignments, like my puzzles. You're going to have to do those. But when we get to the visual basic programming part during the second half of the semester, you can choose to do the homework or not do the homework. It's up to you. If you don't do it, that's okay with me. If you don't do your visual basic programming homework, that's okay with me. You're just going to fail my final and my quizzes on visual basic programming, and you will fail the class. I'm not going to force you to do those homework. I will force you to do my other homework assignment, but not during the second half. Anyway, this will become more clear as we move along. Here's information about the final exam. Here's information about the required material. Everybody should get themselves a flash drive. Here are the titles of the books. You can buy the, well, these are the titles of the books. You can buy the bundle at the LACC bookstore. Here's a link where you can get Visual Studio Express for free. You're going to need that because you're in 103. And you're going to need to download and install on your computer. If you want to work from your home computer, that is. If you want to work from your home computer, you're going to need to install um, Visual Studio Express from the web. Here's the link. It's a free download. Here's a link to the puzzle. You're going to need to make puzzles I just showed you. Here's the link to download and install Pips Crossword. And then if you want to do extra credit, there's a link to amphiteam.com. You're going to need to download and install Amphi on your home computer to do some of the extra credit assignments. But let's not get too worried about downloading Amphi right away. I'm just telling you what's on the syllabus. I will tell you about how to download and install Amphi on your home computer when the time comes for when we have to do those extra credit assignments. For now, let's not worry too much about that. Here's the syllabus. Go over it. Understand what's in it. Academic honesty policy. You know what the results are for cheating anywhere. You don't want to go there. So you need to read this. Plagiarism is a form of cheating. If you are going to drop my class, you need to decide to do so, and you need to do so right away before the, you, you get an incomplete, before you get a W. I already explained to you what attendance is. Attendance means you are participating. What does it mean that you are participating? That you are doing your homework, that you are doing your assignments, 
that you're completing your quizzes. So missing two or more assignments is equal to non-participation. And I already explained that to you, but here it is again. If you know that you are not going to be able to do your homework and do it on time, you probably need to drop my class. If you are ill because you have a condition and you know you're going to be hospitalized and you're going to be missing some homework assignment, then you need to let me know right away because the only way I allow people to make up exams is if they are seriously ill and that illness can be corroborated by a physician and I will ask for proof of illness and I will verify by calling the physician that in fact you were incapacitated, that in fact you could not come to a computer and do your quiz. Um, I already explained to you how to send me emails and when not to send me email under the conditions under which you can expect or not expect replies to your emails. I talked to you about Medicaid. So here it is again. And then the last part of my syllabus simply outlines what it is that you got to do when um, the points that is worth. For example, during the week of February 10th, that's the start of that week, you have to do certain things for me. By the 14th of September, you need to have taken the syllabus quiz. This is worth 12 points. Notice that the due deadline is Friday, because February 14th is a Friday. As a matter of fact, February 21 is a Friday. February 28 is a Friday. March 7th is a Friday. All homework assignments are due on Fridays. I'm going to repeat that because that's very important. All homework assignments are due on Friday, right before midnight, 11 minutes, 15 minutes before midnight. So during the second week of classes, the week of February 17th, on February 21st, that Friday, you have two assignments too. You have your Eclipse crossword, and you have um, a Word, Microsoft Word assignment. Both of these are worth 15 points. Of course, I will explain to you how to do that puzzle, and I'll explain to you how to do those, that homework, because there will be videos that I will record for you. Okay? And I will tell you what these recorded videos are, so you can watch them. All right. So um, this here, this last part of the syllabus tells you the week, what I will cover, what you have to do, and the points that they're worth. In this case, like I said, five points. Okay. Going back to etudes, this was the syllabus. I'm going to click on Assignments, Tests, and Surveys next. When you click on that, you're not going to see exactly what I have here. You're not going to see all of these red circles. No, you're not. I'm the teacher, and I, I get to see more stuff than you. But you will see the syllabus quiz, quiz 1, quiz 2, quiz 3, quiz 4, etc. Okay? And you see it's not yet open. And here it says the zero out of three chances. So you have three chances to take your syllabus quiz. But this one, syllabus quiz one, is you get one chance. It's 45 minutes. It'll open on the 23rd, and it'll close on the 28th. Okay? So uh, what you would do to take a quiz is you would come here, click on Assignments, and then you would click Begin. I'm going to click on Begin to show you how it goes. I'm going to just pretend I'm going to take the syllabus quiz, so we click begin. And then I have to check this box right here. This is an honor pledge saying that I am who I say I am and that nobody's taking the quiz from me. And it's on my honor that I'm going to be honest. And then you will click on begin. When you click on begin, you're going to see the questions. And you will click true or false. And then you will click next. And then you get another question, question 241. And then you will click the answer and you will click next. You could check this if you want to, if you're not sure of the answer, flag it so that you can check it later, right before you submit. 
But anyway, you would just do this very simple thing and take your quizzes. This is how you take your quizzes. All right, I'm going to click on resources. This is very important. Here on resources, there's a bunch of stuff. This, way, this is where I'm going to put a PDF file uh, that says um, recorded lectures. So you're going to come, there's going to be a file here that says recorded lectures. And I'll tell, tell you more about that later on. But um, so there. There's a lot of stuff here that is very important. Number one, you have your Office 2010 student data file. I'm going to go over that right now. You have your Visual Basic student data files. We're not going to need the Visual Basic programming student data files until the second half of the semester when this class is going to get hard. During the first half, this class is easy. During the second half, when we talk about programming, that's when it gets hard. But these are the Visual Basic programming student data files for the second half of the semester. So let me talk about the Office 2010 student data files for the first half of the semester. I'm going to click on it. And here's what's inside that folder. AC means access. AC chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. EX means Excel. Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. PPT means PowerPoint. Chapter 1 and chapter 2. WD means Word. Chapter 1, Chapter 2, and Chapter 3. If I need to do the homework for the first chapter of Word, I will click on that and download the student data files. Of course, you're going to read, read your book to know what to do because your book gives you additional directions. But the, the directions in the book will ask you to open up a certain student data file. And I'm telling you right now that that student data file is this one. So anyway. How do you download the student data files when you click on them? And I'm using Internet Explorer. And with Internet Explorer, I get a strip down here that tells me if I want to save, save as, or save and open. If you're using Firefox or Opera or some other browser, your browsing experience is going to be slightly different. And I expect that you know the differences. That's why you're using Firefox. That's why you're using Opera, because you're more comfortable using that. Or perhaps you like to use Chrome and you know how to use Chrome. I prefer Internet Explorer, but that's OK. So I'm going to click on Save As. And I'm going to save this on the desktop. Notice that the file is called WD0, excuse me, WD underscore CH01 underscore student underscore data underscore files dot zip. It's a zip file. It's compressed. So I'm going to have to decompress it once I put it on the desktop. So I click Desktop, click Save, and it's now on the desktop. I'm going to go to my desktop next, and I see that the file is already there. I'm going to double click it to decompress it. Decompression is a very simple process, but students don't do it correctly. This is how you decompress files. You double click, you get a window. Make the window smaller, and then you see a folder inside. Take that folder outside and drag it to the desktop. That's the actual decompression. If you do not drag the folder that is inside the window to the desktop, you did not decompress anything, and you have not accomplished anything, and you will not be able to successfully do your work. Did you get that? I'm going to do that again because this is so important. I'm going to try it first. You downloaded a zip compressed file. Students think that to that decompress it, they just double click it. And that's not true. You don't just double click it. That is not true. You have to take the file and drag it out and put it on the desktop. That is decompression. If you don't drag it out, you're not decompressing. You will end up now with the original file, which is still zipped, but you now have one that is not zipped up. You don't see the zipper. You can double click it, and now you can go to work and do whatever it is you need to do. OK, I'm going back to E2ZNG. So I was telling you what's inside the Office 2010 student data files and the importance of these student data files, because you're going to need them to do your homework during the first half of this semester. 
You can click on this folder with the arrow pointing up to go up one level. See that right there? And now I can see that there is a whole bunch of other resources. What I want to bring to your attention is something really, really, really very, very important. This is the study guide that I mentioned. Okay, so if you have not been paying attention for the last 40 minutes or so, you should start paying attention now. This is your study guide to pass my quizzes and your study guide to pass my final exam. I am going to download it and show you what it is. I'm going to click on it. I want to say, pass, click Save As, click the desktop. I want to save it on the desktop. Click Save, go to my desktop. Here's my st study guide. I am going to unzip it just like I did my student data files. So I'm going to unzip it with a double click. And I'm going to drag the contents out. Close this window. And I have the original student study guide, which is still zipped, and the unzipped version. When I open the unzipped version, I see that there's 13 chapters, one study guide per chapter. I'm going to open up chapter one. Notice that there are questions and options. When you read chapter one, or when you read chapter two, or when you read chapter three, have this study guide open so you can answer the questions. My recommendation to you is the following. Read your book, your Technology in Action book, find the answer to this question, and when you found the answer, highlight it. The next one, highlight it. Of course, I'm not highlighting the correct answers. That is for you to do. So you would come, read the questions, and highlight the answers. And you do that for the entire study guide. Yes, I know, it's a lot of questions. Some of them are true false. Still, you read the question, find the answer, highlight it, whatever you think the correct answer is, like I'm doing now. Of course, I'm telling you again, these are not the correct answers. I'm just highlighting something because I'm telling you what you would do. Okay, so I just finished reading chapter one, and I answer all the questions for chapter one. And then, of course, I will go to chapter two and repeat the process, highlighting what I think the correct answers are for chapter two. And then I will do that for chapter three. Okay, like that. And then, once you have the answers to the first three chapters, then you're ready to take your first quiz. So let's talk about the quiz and all the other quizzes. You're going to take a quiz, one big quiz, quiz number one, your first quiz. The first quiz is made up of chapters one, two, and three. You're going to read chapters one, two, and three before you take quiz number one. You're going to take quiz number two sometime later in the semester. And to prepare for quiz number two, you would read and study chapters four, five, and six. You would then still later on in the semester have to take quiz number three. To take quiz number three, you would prepare, prepare and read chapters seven, eight, and nine. Every three chapters, you understand that. Quiz number four, you need to read chapters 10, 11, and 12. And then for the final, you would need to read chapters 1 through 13. OK, I hope that is clear. So let me tell you how it works. So you're going to take quiz number one. Which is made up of chapters 1, chapter 2, and chapter three. What will happen is this. The computer will choose 15 questions from all the possible questions. Look, here's chapter one.
chapter one has a bunch of questions, like 70, 100 questions. Out of all these 70, 100 questions, whatever they are, the computer will choose 15 questions out of chapter one. The computer will choose 15 questions out of chapter two. The computer will choose 15 questions out of chapter three. For a total of 45 questions, you understand. You will have 30 minutes to answer these 45 questions. And you only get one chance. So you make sure you're doing it from a quiet location with a good computer. Okay? I hope that makes sense. I'm going back to Etudes now. So that's the study guide. There's going to be there's all sorts of other files here that are useful. You can start looking at them if you like. I will bring them to your attention as the time nears. This pretty much brings me to the end of my video. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful day.